Mr. President, please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is back in session. L'audience reprend. I hand over to the defense team for Mr. Nunchia to continue his line questioning. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, let us uh, discuss uh, briefly amongst ourselves about uh, certain issues. Uh, the good news is that I, after this conversation, do not have any further questions for this witness. I do want to point out for the record that uh, several my speakers have um, commented on uh, the translation of uh, the expression of the record, and we just want to make sure that there is no um, confusion about this term. So when we speak about a conversation that is off the record, what is meant usually means that uh, a conversation has been conducted, in this case, between the OCIG and the witness, and that conversation has not been recorded. So I hope that we should also uh, a bit clearer for the Khmer speakers, the issues that we were raising with regard to that interview we were talking about of the record conversations between investigators of the OCIJ and another witness in the village of um, this witness. Other than that, I have no Ceci mis à part, je n'ai pas d'autres observations ou commentaires. Je tiens à remercier M. Sokchin pour vous être déplacé, être venu répondre à nos questions aujourd'hui. C'est un prévédit aux questions de l'équipe Nouchea. Et je donne la parole à mes collègues, mais je pense qu'ils n'ont pas d'autres questions à poser. Le Président. Le Président. Merci. It appears that uh, the other defense teams uh, do not have any question to put to the witness, and if you do, uh, you may proceed, but if not, um, the hearing of the testimony of Mr. Sok Chen uh, comes to an end. Mr. Sok Chen, uh, your testimony before us has come to an end. You may now return uh, to your home or any destination you wish to go. And we would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for taking time uh, to uh, testify before this court. Particularly, you have made every effort to respond to all the questions put to you. Your testimony contributes significantly to ascertaining uh, the truth. Court officer is instructed uh, to coordinate with the uh, VESU uh, unit uh, for the uh, transport of this uh, witness uh, back home. Mr. Sokchen, uh, you are now released, and we wish you the best of luck and safe trip back home. Nous vous souhaitons un bon retour chez vous. Le président, court officer, is now instructing l'huissier d'audience uh, to bring in the uh, civil party TCCP 64 de, uh, to the courtroom. À, à la cour, uh, le, uh, la partie civile TC. The President, the Chamber wishes to advise the parties that in accordance with uh, the request by Ian Sari, uh, dated the 1st of October uh, 2012, uh, through his Defence Council, that he has expressed his uh, waiver of his right uh, to be present directly in this courtroom in relation to uh, a number of witnesses and civil party, uh, including the, uh, the civil party before us now, TCCP64. 
Mr. Ying Sari is now being uh, hospitalized uh, at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital, and he has uh, waived his right to be present directly in the hearing of the testimony of uh, this uh, civil party due to his uh, health reason. Um, and the chamber uh, decides uh, to hear the a testimony of uh, TCCP 64 uh, without the direct presence of Mr. Ying Sari in accordance with uh, Rule 81.5 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers. Good afternoon, uh, Civil Party. What is your name? Response. Réponse. Good afternoon. Bon Good afternoon, Mr. President and your Monsieur honors. My name is Lai Boni. I was born on the 20th of March 1950 in uh, Sankat No. 4, uh, Phnom Penh. President, Le thank you, uh, Merci, Madame Lai Bouni. Uh, where is your current residence? Uh, est votre domicile actuel? Response. Réponse. I live in Trepeng Chu village, village de Trepeng street 371, uh, Rue uh, 371, Tecla Commune, Phnom Penh. City. Question. Question. What is your occupation Quelle now? Est votre occupation actuellement? Réponse. Response. I am a housewife. Je suis femme au foyer. Questions. What is your father's name? Quel est le nom de votre père? Réponse. My father's name is Lai Kroi. Uh, he is deceased. Question. How about Question. your mother? What is Et her votre name? Mère, quel est son nom? Response. Réponse. My mother's name Ma is Kutsin. Kutsin. She is deceased. Elle est également décédée. Thank you. Question. How about your husband? Uh, what is his name and how many children have you got? Response. Réponse. Do you mean my uh, present husband? Uh, vous voulez dire, uh, my mon present husband actuel. is Chan Sabon and I have uh, three uh, children. The president. Le president. Now, in the capacity, in your capacity as civil party, en tant que parti civil, uh, you may uh, take uh, this opportunity to uh, express uh, to the court uh, the injury you have sustained physically, materially, uh, which uh, may have resulted uh, from the uh, crimes that took place uh, during the period of the Democratic Cambodia that amounted to your application to join as a civil party before the chamber. And uh, you may also express uh, the suffering and uh, injuries uh, that you sustained during that period, and this right is being granted to you, and you may make a statement at the conclusion of the testimony. The chamber will grant you uh, appropriate time uh, to make such a statement, and you, uh, we advise you uh, from an outset so that uh, you uh, may uh, prepare yourself accordingly when you uh, wish to express uh, the sufferings and injuries you sustained during the period. The legal lawyer for the civil parties, uh, in accordance with Rule 91B of the Internal Rules, the Chamber uh, hand over the floor uh, to the civil party legal lawyers uh, to put the question before any other parties to these proceedings. You may now have the floor. Council uh, Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours. For this particular civil party, uh, lawyer Moit uh, Sovannery and Council Simono Ford uh, will put the question to the civil party. The President, thank you. Le président, uh, je vous remercie. Council, you may proceed. Maître, vous Lawyer, Moïse Savannery. 
Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours. And good afternoon, uh, Civil Party. I will start uh, the question first, and then uh, Madame Simono Fort uh, will follow. My questions were uh, based largely on the a statement uh, of the civil party uh, before the co-investigating judge. Uh, dated the 6th of August 2009, document D246-2. Uh, and with your leave, uh, Mr. President, I would like to have this uh, statement uh, present to the uh, civil party and have it uh, projected on the screen. The president, uh, court officer, is instructed to obtain a hard copy uh, from the civil party lawyers and present it to the witness for uh, her examination. De sa déclaration qui sera remise à la partie civile et le document sera affiché à l'écran. With the uh, document you are being presented, uh, do you recall uh, that uh, there were staff members from the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia uh, went to interview you? The president. Madame Lai Bouni, uh, Madame Lai Bouni uh, please be reminded that uh, si you should wait until you see the red light is on before you speak so that your voice can get through the uh, sound systems uh, and then the interpretation can uh, get through. Uh, you may proceed. Audio puisse enregistrer vos paroles et que les interprètes I puissent remember that following my application to Je join as a civil party, there was a summon civil, uh, calling uh, me to uh, meet uh, at somewhere à, around Capco uh, Market. I saw that they were asking Capco, me to uh, uh, discuss my application. They put, me certain they put to me certain de questions de and I responded uh, to their questions. Civil, and I recall uh, having that interview. Thank you. I would like to uh, break the, my question into three parts in relation to this document. The first part concerns the, uh, your family uh, status as well as your uh, living condition before the victory of the Khmer Rouge on the 17th of April 1975. And the second part of my uh, question concerns uh, the uh, reason for the eviction of you and your family uh, out of Phnom Penh City. And the third part of my my question uh, concerns uh, the uh, second wave of evacuation uh, of you and your family from Ksaikandal in Kandal province to Bakan district in Kosat province. My first question to you uh, that was before the arrival of the Khmer Rouge uh, soldier in Phnom Penh. And uh, in order to follow up with this question, I would like uh, to um, ask you to look at here and in Khmer of the same document, 00. 37, 32, 45. English, 00. 37, 91, 55. And French, 00. 42, 47. According to this uh, statement, uh, you say that uh, your uh, son uh, dies uh, before the arrival of the Khmer Rouge soldier, which was on the 17th of April 1975. Can you uh, tell the court the uh, conditions uh, uh, and the overall living condition uh, of the delivery of your baby. At that time, you were you not allowed uh, to uh, deliver your baby in the hospital? Response. 
At the time, the country uh, was in a chaotic situation. I was uh, pregnant, and it was mature, mature at that time. So I stayed uh, in front of a long night. Uh, hospital clinics, and at that time there were rockets uh, launched over Cambodia Na Hotel. So my mother did not send me to the hospital because uh, she was concerned that we would uh, uh, separate. So uh, she asked uh, the midwife, the traditional midwife, uh, to come and help me deliver the baby. So uh, uh, she asked one midwife, and I at that time had to uh, sustain a long labor pain. Uh, it was rather long, but uh, then finally I could deliver the baby, but unfortunately my baby uh, died uh, prematurely before um, uh, it was uh, born. And I uh, thought uh, that uh, I, uh, that was because of the improper uh, delivery of uh, the uh, baby uh, due to the unprofessional medical level of the uh, midwife. And at that time, I did not feel very well after delivering the baby uh, because probably there were, there were lack of hygiene uh, during uh, my uh, delivery. So I went to a hospital afterward in order to have uh, my health uh, checked. But 20 days uh, afterwards, uh, uh, I, on the 17th of April 1975, I had to be evicted out of my home and out of the city as well, just 20 days after I delivered my baby. Thank you. I would like to refer to the same document, but in another section, in the relevant EON in Khmer 00373245, in English 00379140. In French, 00 at that time, you uh, uh, told the investigator uh, that your uh, husband was uh, the um, a captain, a captain in the army during Long Null. And I would like to uh, expand a bit further. Your husband was a captain uh, in Long Null soldiers. And when did uh, he leave uh, the Long Null soldier? In other words, when did he remove uh, his um, uh, military uniform of Long Null soldier? Response. At the time, uh, my husband had to uh, remove uh, the uh, uniform, uh, but it was uh, before uh, the uh, Khmer New Year. At that time, the country was uh, in a very chaotic situation, and London was evacuated uh, somewhere else. So those soldiers who were standing guard uh, of his house had to return home at that time, and he had to abandon his uh, uh, soldier's status and remove his uniform. Question. In relation to the uh, condition of the Lonel soldiers at that time, uh, is it a fair summary to say that uh, the Lonel soldiers uh, abandoned uh, Phnom Penh City when Lonel uh, left uh, Phnom Penh? Uh, is that a fair summary of uh, the event at that time as it unfolded? Respond. I do not recall the events at that time, but uh, to my recollection, uh, my husband told me that uh, Lonel the marshal, the field marshal Lono had uh, uh, left uh, Phnom Penh, uh, so uh, he did not uh, uh, go to work as regularly as before. He just went there once in a while. Question. Did you tell the investigator so my next question is uh, question uh, in relation to the overall condition of the uh, people in Phnom Penh before the entry of the Khmer Rouge uh, soldier uh, in Phnom Penh. What was the overall situation like in Phnom Penh? Uh, I mean, in relation to the food staff uh, and also security uh, issue in Phnom Penh. Can you tell the court uh, the overall situation of Phnom Penh at the time, just before the Khmer Rouge period? Uh, L'entrée des soldats Khmer Rouge dans Phnom Penh. 
response. At that time, the situation was very, very chaotic. And at that time, the price, the food price surged. Uh, the, we could hardly find any rice to buy, and the commodities in general was very volatile. And, uh, there were many people, influx of people from the countryside into Phnom Penh. And as for my family, we had to dig up the trench just uh, underneath our house. And at that time, uh, we were prepared uh, to uh, hide ourselves in the trench. And we were looking uh, for other stuff. And at that time, I did not really have problem with uh, food uh, shortage because my uh, husband was a, a soldier, and then the soldier was given a sufficient rice at that time. So uh, in my family, we did not have problem with rice, but we had uh, problems with other foodstuffs, uh, like meat and things like that. And then at times we heard the uh, firing as well as the, um, the shelling uh, from everywhere across the country. And then we were very attentive to the situation at that time. And it was real chaotic. And before uh, the fall of Phnom Penh, uh, we could hardly describe the situation because we did not know what was what at that time. So it was real chaotic. Thank you. So you experienced uh, living in such a uh, chaos situation. Uh, what was your expectation of the Khmer Rouge soldiers in Phnom Penh following the 17th of April victory? Response. Following the victory on the 17th of 1975, the country was in a chaotic situation, and as I said, there was a huge influx of the country people into Phnom Penh. When the Khmer Rouge soldier came in, we were very happy. We congratulated them. We thought that uh, they would bring peace uh, to the country. We raised white uh, clothes uh, to welcome them. We uh, saw people um, chanting and uh, clapping uh, along the street, and everyone believed uh, that uh, Cambodia or peace would return to Cambodia. Question. Question. Thank you. So now I would like to move uh, on to the uh, eviction uh, of you out of Phnom Penh. So immediately after the Khmer Rouge uh, into Phnom Penh, uh, uh, where did you live? We would like to know the uh, specific location where you resided uh, uh, when the Khmer Rouge uh, came to Phnom Penh. When I Response. Uh, when Lorsque I uh, was uh, sick, uh, at that time I stayed in a house in front of Long Nghet Hospital. Dans une en face and de once de I, une fois uh, my, I, I got better, then I came uh, to stay in my house near Mongkot Pit uh, uh, Theater, uh, near, uh, near Pet Chen. Pet Chen. I uh, continue to stay in my house, Et but I stayed there for just a few days. Maison, then, um, on the 17th of April, the Khmer Rouge uh, soldier came to Phnom Penh, and they uh, ordered that we had to leave uh, our house immediately. And they ordered us uh, to leave on the pretext that the uh, Americans uh, would bomb uh, the city. So they wanted uh, to, uh, they wanted the resident of Phnom Penh to leave for a temporary temporary period, say, uh, seven to, uh, uh, three to seven days. And at that time, I had uh, two children. One was three years old, the other one was five years old. So I could not carry many stuff with myself, and I, I, I thought to myself that uh, I could simply uh, have the money so I could buy anything in the countryside. So I did not bring many stuff with me. I only brought the uh, bank notes uh, with me. But immediately when I left the city, I heard from people that uh, they did not use bank notes anymore. Uh, bank notes were not uh, in use. And what, uh, what is more, I also saw that uh, there were a lot of roadblocks uh, along, uh, out of the uh, city, and there were uh, jams, and there were people all over the street, 
Uh, and we had to move uh, very slowly from the cockpit uh, to the uh, Royal University of Law. It uh, took me the whole morning. And at that time, it was a very tough day in my life because uh, I had just delivered my baby and I had to travel on foot. Uh, I had to carry my two kids uh, with me as well and under the uh, daylight and sunlight. And I, it was a very, very uh, tough moment in my life. I had never uh, endured such a tough life before. Before I had many um, house peppers uh, at my uh, place, but uh, it was a very uh, difficult uh, moment in my life. And then, uh, after the night, I walked past uh, Chiba Ampeng Bridge. Uh, lawyer, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Madam, uh, thank you. I will move on to that uh, part of the uh, journey out of Phnom Penh, but uh, I would like to ask you to slow down a little bit for the interpreters to render it uh, properly. Question. So after the uh, victory of the Khmer Rouge, uh, did the Khmer Rouge announce uh, anything for the public uh, once they took power? Response. At that time, they Réponse. announced through radio broadcast, the national radio broadcast, saying that uh, the Khmer Rouge uh, took complete control of the country. Uh, so uh, people in Phnom Penh, the uh, Phnom Penh dwellers, uh, remained uh, silent and calm and uh, stayed in the house until further instruction or information be given. Question. In the radio broadcast, uh, did they make mention any plan of evacuation of people out of the city? Response. I did not hear the announcement on radio in relation to that particular instruction, but the direct instruction we received were from the soldiers who came to our house. Question. You said uh, just now Question. that uh, there were orders from the uh, soldiers who ordered you to leave your house. So in your recollection, in your uh, uh, record of uh, interview, the relevant year and in Khmer 00, 37, uh, 32, 45, that is the same uh, page in Khmer, and English uh, 00, 37, 91, and French 00, 42, 24, 47. On this uh, part of the interview, you said de that uh, they had uh, uh, weapons with them, they had guns with them, so we were asked to leave uh, our house at gunpoint, so we had to leave. So I would like to ask you uh, precisely how many soldiers came to your house in order to leave? Soldiers arrived, and every one of them sont carried a gun. Eux était armé. Question: What uniforms were they wearing? Question: Quels uniformes portaient-ils? Response: Réponse. They were wearing black uniforms. Ils portaient des uniformes noirs. They, they wore a cap avec une, or a beret. Avec un beret ou une casquette. Question: When they entered your house, Alors, ont what was chez vous, their attitude and what did they a été tell leur you? Attitude et que vous ont -ils dit? Response: Réponse. At that time, I was in my house. Bien, they chez were moi. quite animated, talking to my Ils husband and to my agités. neighbors à mon mari who were living on the ground floor. Uh, I live on the upper floor. And after that, after they moi, left, my husband came étage. up to me and je told me that they firmly ordered us to leave immediately, that we could now no longer stay in our house. And as my husband <coughs> saw saw them in their uh, firm uh, character uh, with guns, then we decided to pack our house and put on the truck. 
de faire nos bagages et so de four, euh, families, euh, les charger in that house, euh, sur un, un camion. Trois ou quatre autres familles ont également euh, euh, fait leurs bagages et ont chargé cela sur le camion. Question, avez-vous euh, protesté et dit que vous ne vouliez pas partir Response. Réponse. At that time, we dare not protest ce moment-là, nous n'avons pas protesté parce que nous avons vu qu'ils étaient armés et que leur attitude était très ferme. Thank you. Question. Merci. Question. When the Khmer Rouge soldiers Lorsque les soldats Khmer Rouge ont pénétré dans votre maison, that your husband was a former était-il au courant du fait officer? que votre mari était un ancien officier de l'armée de Non Nol Réponse. No, they did not. Non. Ils go to pas the upper floor, so courant, they se sont were not aware that my husband was a military officer. Ils savaient que mon mari était un officier de l'armée. Question. Votre mari a-t-il caché son identité lorsqu'il a parlé avec les soldats Khmer Rouge Avez-vous le traitement que les soldats Khmer Rouge réservaient aux anciens soldats de Lon Nol Réponse. I saw some events and uh, I was told by others that the Lono soldiers uh, had their hands, uh, their arms tight behind their back as so they, they looked at the, the ankles of those people and they Il could see whether they were former military officers or soldiers. Question. Your entire family was forced to evacuate from Phnom Penh. Can you tell the court what were the members of your family and how many all together? Response. At that time, there were four of us in my family, namely my husband, myself, and our two children. However, when we left on the track, there were my Lorsque cousins who were living camion, together with us, and then they the nous. two families of the housemate donc, of my cousin, they were also boarding that track. Question. Let me now move to the path that you were en route, leaving Phnom Penh. Alors que vous quittiez Phnom Penh. In your document on page in Khmer with the EN 0073-3246 and English 0037-9156 and 5624 Response. I learned that Réponse. through my husband and oui, my relatives who were traveling with us as we saw dead bodies along the road and we asked what happened to them and we were Et told that those people arrivé, wanted to return back and they were shot. And that's how I learned about that. Et ainsi que je su. Questioned on the same page, you also stated Question. that Toujours en route, page, you saw people route, being evacuated from the Russian hospital and that you saw sick people living on the bed and some of them were uh, traveling and were pushed by other people. Sur, uh, the question is, did you see the sick people who were evacuated from the hospital, and if so, how many of them did you see? Le cas échéant, combien en avez-vous Response. At that time, I could not Réponse. describe the real event, but from what I see from the track, 
I saw them and asked what happened to them and they said that they were from the hospital, there were hospital beds and some of them had the IV injection on. Those who could walk would walk and those who could not walk would be carried and some of them would stay on the, the hospital bed and were pushed or pulled by another person. Question. During the evacuation of people from the hospital, did you see that the Khmer Rouge soldiers were managing such evacuation? And if so, can you describe what was their attitude towards the sick people or the patients who were evacuated from the hospital? Response. At that time, I saw Khmer Rouge soldiers, vu des soldats they, Khmer Rouge. their facial expressions were firm, they Ils carried guns, très ferme. and their eyes moved around, but they did not pay much Leur attention to the patient. They said all people had to be evacuated, including the patients. Tout le monde they all had to leave Phnom Penh. Question. In the same Question. document, Toujours on the same document. page, you also stated that you saw dead bodies along the road in a Prey Pra. My first question relating to this point is that the Prey Pra village that you uh, spoke of, where was it located? Response. Prey Pra village was located near at the base of the Chiba Ampe Bridge. Était près du village de Chiba there, Ampe. It was on the road to the side of the bridge. En fait, il était à droite. It was mostly, it, it is mostly occupied by the Cham people now. Uh, qui est maintenant plus ou moins, enfin l'endroit est plus ou moins peuplé de Cham maintenant. Question, when you arrived uh, firstly at that Question. village, what Lorsque was the situation like? Ce village, -vous nous la situation? Response. Upon my first arrival, Réponse. I was very thirsty due to the heat from the sun. Car, uh, so I asked my husband to look after the two children and I went répondre. to look for water. At that time, it, it was a uh, in early evening, and I saw dead bodies, and I moved to another place, another house, I also saw dead bodies. So I was so terrified and shocked because I did not see such dead bodies around before. So I left and I met other people who also told me that they also saw dead bodies elsewhere, but we did not know how they died. Question: The dead bodies that Question. you saw were they fresh dead bodies, Les que vous avez vu étaient or were they already decomposing? Ces gens étaient-ils morts récemment ou étaient-ils déjà Response. en état de décomposition? At that time, there was no bad smell yet, bon, otherwise we would not enter the house. Sinon, nous ne serions pas entrés dans la maison. Young children in the hammock, and Il y avait des jeunes enfants dans le hammock et aussi des femmes. Question. Let me now move on. In the same document on je vais, je vais passer à une the page, page with the Khmer ER and 0037, 3246, 247 in English, 0037-9157, and in French, 0042-2448. My apology for nine. Pardon, you stated that Vous you could no longer move further because you just uh, recently delivered a baby, and my husband got off the uh, truck and the et truck uh, went ahead. We stayed in that pagoda for uh, two weeks. My question is, which of your relatives uh, went ahead and which remained uh, with you? de votre famille ont poursuivi et qui est resté avec vous Response. At that Réponse. time, we, across the Cockrobay 
commune à in order to go to a commune there was a pagoda and we stayed in the pagoda I was very unwell and my husband said that we could no longer move we had to stay in the pagoda at that time My cousin who used to live uh, with us, he, he also stopped and rested in that the pagoda. And the pe people pagode. on the trap asked whether we wanted to, to go, go with them, them. but my husband si responded that we could no longer go because I, am, I was unwell as I recently delivered the baby. And then we were told that they had to go ahead in order to meet with Anka and the situation would become better. But by then I didn't know what Anka was. Mais je ne savais pas ce qu'était l'Anka à l'époque. Question regarding your personal health. I have a question for you. During the time that you stayed at Swai Protil village, what was the situation like? What were measures taken by the Khmer Rouge soldiers toward the evacuees, for example, food supply, accommodation, and medicines, and in particular regarding your unhealthy status and your two young children, did they provide any medical care to you? Response. Réponse. At that time, I did not see any Khmer Rouge soldiers taking any steps in taking care of the people. De qui que ce soit. I lived there for four to five days. Je suis resté là And instantly, when we arrived, we had no rice to cook because we already spent the rice uh, on, on route. So I, did, I went in, into the village, and I was told that even the best people there did not have rice to eat. In fact, they actually used corn in place of uh, the rice, and then I, I begged for corn from them in exchange of uh, some of the possessions that I had. And that was the time that my younger daughter had her bowel problem because that was the first time that she ate uh, such a uh, food. So her stomach would not be able to, to sustain the nourriture. And After we ate such a food for four to five days, and while I was unwell, some of the best people came to me, and I actually asked them about the situation back in the village, and I was told that I should register our name, and then I could get the food ration from the soldiers there, and I did that. So then I got a samurai. For each person, we was given one can of rice a day. So as we had four members in our family, we got four cans of rice. We got rice, but we had to look for other foodstuffs. And at that time, my younger daughter was sick, and we did not have any medicines for the treatment. Malade, nous n'avions aucun médicament pour la soigner. So for that, uh, my younger daughter got that uh, disease since. Et d'ailleurs, ma fille a été malade. Questioned in that same document, you also stated that you left Swai Protil village Question. and arrived at the Chu Til commune in uh, Kin Swai district. On page with the command ERN 0037 in English 00379158 and in French 00424449. You stated that we wanted to go to Ksaikonda district as my mother lived there. The question to you is that. During such chaotic situation, Mais how could you know that chaos, your mother was still there? Comment pouviez-vous savoir que votre mère était toujours là-bas? 
response. At that time, I knew that uh, my family members, including my mother and my aunt, already reached le village in Ksakanda district as my cousin was looking for us and then we met my cousin and I was told that my family members already reached that location so we prepared our belongings together with my cousin whatever we could carry we carried and my cousin had uh, their children had her children who were rather uh, teenagers, so we returned to Kingsway District at the Churchill Commune, and there was a road leading to the Commune, so we returned to that location in order to meet my mother. I was thinking that I was unwell and my daughter was unwell, and if I could meet my family members, they would be able to support me either physically or mentally, or they could find herbal medicine to, for our treatment. Question on the same page, you also stated that Khmer Rouge did not allow you to go ahead uh, and that you could not return. And if you attempted to return, the Khmer Rouge would uh, kill you. How did you learn about that? Were you threatened not to return, or what happened at the time? Response. At that time, once we left, there were military checkpoints, and we were told that we could not proceed further, and that we should enter the village and not to wander around, and that Anker would take a measure. But I rested on the road, but I did not enter the village. During the day, we Rested, but at night we tried to flee, but we were caught and we were returned. But on the fourth night we could flee. But my cousin by then didn't want to wait for us, so my cousin already had left. So my husband and I had to flee. With a little bit of our belonging, I carried my younger daughter at the front and my younger, my older child at the back. At that time, we didn't have any means of transportation. We had to carry our belonging by ourselves and walk on foot. And at that time, you could imagine, I just uh, delivered a baby, so my health was uh, very weak. And my cousin who stopped at the Swai Proteo village didn't go further because they, as they decided to live in that village, but my husband and I decided to flee, and yes, we fled. Written record of interview. You stated that you were evacuated from Phnom Penh, passing through Rasen Hospital, Prague, 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 Bay, Kinsway, Swatil, Sang, Sang, until you reached Anchangle Village in Sakanda District, Kanda Province, where your mother reach that location before you. So my question is, en route from Phnom Penh to Ksakanda district, did you notice that Khmer Rouge soldiers check the biography of the people traveling on road? However, let me go a little bit further. When I met my mother, my father, my mother told me that my other in law, who was a colonel, was gathered and returned to Phnom Penh in order to work in Phnom Penh as he was informed. Question. 
question. So during the in order to link to your the second phase question. of evacuation, Donc, the during the time that you stay at the cooperative Alors in Saint Condal district, Condal province, did the Khmer Rouge cadre receive you properly together with other evacuees? I mean, Donc, in terms of accommodation, work arrangement, du logement et du travail que vous deviez faire for uh, newly arrived people like yourself? Comme vous. Response. Réponse. At that time when I first arrived, I arrivé, registered uh, my name with Comrade John. John was the chief of Yon. the group, Yon and I knew that a person. Group, et je le connaissais. So I registered uh, my name Donc, with his group. Du groupe de Yon. So we were allowed to stay in his house. Et it was a big de house. Dans sa maison, qui était assez grande. So the house could be called the house of the rich uh, people in uh, that area. We stayed la... in that house and I worked in the farm. Firstly, de, we went uh, to sur, build sur dikes. Ferme, At that time, it was not yet a rainy digues. season. Pas and later on, we were given a suite, plot of land to build a house. My mother and I, maison, including ma other people comprising of 10 members, was given a plot of land and we built a small hut from bamboo. So my other sisters and her family Ça, also built a house nearby. So we were during the day and we returned to the house at noon. It became a, a regular habit. Et devenu une routine. And during the rainy season, I went Pendant to transplant the right seedlings. At that time, I did not know how to do that. I had to learn how to do it. I tried my best how to follow the local people there. Because I was afraid that if I could not do it, I would be killed. And one time, I went to transplant rice. At Brecon Van Bridge, Au pont de Brecon Van. it is uh, still located in Pocrosay uh, commune these days, uh, and I was asked to cross uh, the, the lake in order to transplant the rice, le but I did not know how to swim, and I drowned. However, I was helped uh, by other, uh, I almost uh, drowned. And from that day, I tried to my best to work Donc, hard and tried to do as much as I could with the best people there. Et faire, et Allow me to interrupt you as I have some other uh, questions uh, that, uh, as the questions president informed you, you will have the opportunity to express your suffering at the end of your testimony. You spoke of a person by the name of John, vous avez parlé donc in your written, written record of interview, in the document with the Khmer EAN 0037324748, and in English 00379158, and in French 5-0, you stated that John was the chief of the group of the Khmer Rouge and was a relative of yours and that John concealed your identity and the identity of your relatives. How did you know that he, he helped conceal the identities of your family members? Response, I knew because the wife of John told me, me dit. because we knew the wife of John, the John's wife was the in-law of en my fait, uncle, de and they of course knew well of our background. Évidemment, il connaissait bien nos so she told me that uh, studying dit. here, I hate through concealed que our identity, village, nous and if we were asked or about si the, the profession of my de, husband, as you said, to tell anyone that he was a taxi driver, taxi. and never ever said that he was a military officer. So I told all my uh, relatives and family members about that, and John 
Also, tried to conceal uh, that information, and of course, it was concealed. And another member, relative member of John, had her husband as a military officer, but because uh, the villagers there knew the person, that person was taken away and they were returned. He was taken away at night, and for that reason, he warned us not to reveal our identity. Question. In the same document, you stated that Pat, the village chief, arrived at your house and informed you that you had to pack your belongings in order to depart for Battambong province. You also stated only newcomers were evacuated. I have a few questions regarding this point. The words that you use, newcomers, les, les what kind of people question, were you referring to when you use these terms? Arrivés, Response. Newcomers, as Réponse. I stated in that statement, I meant the 17 April people who were evacuated from Phnom Penh and who newly arrived, uh, as in our case. ในเปดได้ไม่พูดลูกบ้านปรับเนี่ยใส่เอาจากแจ้งปีเตียเนี่ยใส่ในขนมเพนที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่
political lawyers for civil party and the les prosecution to uh, remind it that civils, uh, the time allocated to civil, you is for one morning session and now you spent uh, one hour et, already uh, so you will have a part of tomorrow morning heure, session donc une partie to de la, question uh, this civil uh, party de please de try to use uh, your time effectively thank you à la civil partie party. civile, veuillez utiliser votre temps the time de, is appropriate uh, for the achievement uh, today uh, and utile, we will resume tomorrow la morning civile. Nous avons terminé starting from 9am and for tomorrow proceeding we will continue to hear the testimony Lai Boni. Mrs. Lai Boni, your Madame testimony Lai has not yet concluded and you are invited to return to testify again tomorrow morning. Court officer in coordination with WISU, could you assist this civil party to return to her accommodation and have her return tomorrow morning? At 9 a.m. Security guards were instructed to take it through accused Nunti and Kusum Pon to the detention facility and have them return to the court tomorrow morning prior to 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.